Welcome to another installment of Stretchers, Scandals, and Unsubstantiated Scuttlebutt. The title of this uh, series in part begins with the word stretchers. That's a term from Mark Twain. The opening paragraphs of Huckleberry Finn, we uh, hear Huck talk about uh, books that stretch the truth. And he talks about uh, how Mr. Twain told the story of Tom and Huck pretty much faithfully, though there were a few stretchers. And so in our series together, we're, we're learning some of the stretchers we've told together as uh, Christians as we've tried to figure out the background of mysterious characters in scripture, uh, characters who we, we don't know much about, people who appear and then vanish just as quickly as they showed up. And so in our last installment, we talked a little bit about these uh, two strange thieves, Dismas and Gestus, who protected Jesus and his family as they were traveling through the wilderness into Egypt. And as we finished that story, uh, we left with Dismas, who is this uh, was kind of noble thief, um, uh, offering uh, to not only his protection to Jesus, but to accompany them all the way into Egypt. And as they parted ways, uh, Mary uh, offered if there was any way that they could repay him for his kindness. And he said, there's really uh, not a whole lot you can do, but perhaps the day may come when we encounter each other again. And on that day, just remember me. Well, we expected that that would never happen, but of course, uh, it would be a better story if it did, and these are stories created to be good tales. And so they did bump into each other once again. You see, many years later, Dismas and Gestus, they moved out of the wilderness, and they, they started to head in towards the cities and in towards the towns, and they got bolder and bolder, and they moved in further and further, uh, coming closer and closer to, to established civilization and to uh, where people lived. And that brought much bigger scores for them, but of course, it brought a lot more danger of being captured. And after several decades of this, um, of, of rising in notoriety and in prominence as thieves, eventually they were caught. And when they were caught, uh, at this point, especially Gestus, who had been known for his violence and bloodshed, um, he had racked up uh, quite, quite a, a body count. And so the people were, were terrified of Gestus in particular, but Dismas had been uh, keeping company with him, and they found themselves sentenced to death. Now, that's all legend. There's no, no historical basis for that. It's a legend that we find told many different places, but uh, no one really knows if that's true or if these people, um, Dismas and Gestus, who even had these names. But there is some interesting scripture. We read about the, the flight into Egypt, and we're now going to read uh, a, another story from the other end of Jesus' life. We read from the beginning, and now we're going to read a, a familiar passage from the end. We'll be reading from Luke uh, chapter 23, beginning at verse 39. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him, saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, truly, I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. Now, this is scripture. We know these words very well from um, every, every year as we celebrate uh, Good Friday and as we head toward Easter. But when you, when you bear in mind this legend of the two thieves that met Jesus when he was traveling to Egypt, this story starts to sound a little different. And the legend is that these two thieves are the same people who met Jesus all those years ago as they've grown over, over the decades and as they've uh, finally been captured. The story is that Dismas and Gestus were on either side of Christ when he was crucified. And so Gestus, the unrepentant, wicked thief on the one side, began to mock Jesus when Dismas, who is a little more of a noble character, spoke up and said, Don't you fear God? Even after all we've been through together, do you, do you still not recognize who this is? And so then Dismas looks at Jesus and perhaps recognized him from that one chance encounter so many decades ago and calls back those same words from that, that promise that was made decades before. And he says, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And the legend, which again is just a story, Jesus looks at, at Dismas and recognizes him and says, I tell you, I do remember you and today you will be with me in paradise. 
We have absolutely no idea if this is a true story. It's it's probably not. But it ends up being a, kind of an interesting look inside the, what may have been the psychology of these other characters in Scripture. As we think about who they were, that they, these were human beings who had histories and lives and desires. They had personalities. And a lot of times when you see the, the crucifixion depicted in art, you'll notice that on, on Jesus' right, uh, there, there's usually where we put the good thief. And on his left, is where we place the bad thief. And almost universally, it's not, not quite, but 99% of the time, Jesus is looking to his right when you see uh, depictions of the crucifixion. Because the, the idea is they're calling back to this part of scripture and to this legend in some sense. As Jesus is looking to the good thief, maybe named Dismas, um, as Jesus remembers that promise and as Jesus uh, recognizes him and offers him the grace to be, be together in paradise that very day. Now, that's just a legend. It's just a story. We don't know if it's true, but it's kind of a fun story to share with one another. And there are so many really interesting stories, including stories even about, about the cross itself. But that's a story for another day.